Hey everyone! <laughs> Welcome back to Make or Bake. Today we're doing a really quick and fun make. Um, it's the summer holidays, Kat. It's the summer holidays. We hope you are enjoying the summer holidays. And Make or Bake's going to be a little bit different all summer because... Uh, we are going to be doing six weeks that follow a bit of a theme. What is the theme, Kat? The theme is... Oh, it rhymes. We've, I've set you up for a good one. What's the theme, theme is team! You've got a poster. <laughs> I have got a poster. So this is a resource made by some wonderful people at Blackburn Diocese, which is a group that supports churches all over Lancashire. And the strap line is, we're all in this together. Oh, I can't sing it because it's copyrighted. But anybody <laughs> who knows what I was about to sing, feel free to follow it in your house. So week one of the six weeks holidays, we're talking about what a team. What now, a Jesus team. had an absolutely amazing team. They completely changed the world. And so we're going to start off by hearing a little story about some of the members of his team. Jesus had begun teaching in towns and synagogues. News about this man who could heal people had spread. But when these people met Jesus, they left everything. Andrew, Simon, who we know as Peter, James, and his brother, John were fishermen. After a long night of fishing, Jesus called to them and gave them some advice to throw their nets off the other side of the boat. The men rolled their eyes but did it anyway. After catching more fish than the nets could cope with, they realised who had been speaking to them. They saw God's spirit in Jesus and when he told them to stop fishing for fish and come with him, the Bible says they pulled the boats up on the beach, left everything and followed Jesus. Matthew was sitting alone in his office collecting taxes from people when Jesus called him. Jesus prayed about which of his many followers he should ask to be his disciples, his special friends who travelled with him, learning from him. He already had five and chose to add another seven. Thomas, James, another one, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas Iscariot. And when Jesus said to Philip, come with me, he found his brother Nathaniel and said, we have found the one that Moses wrote about and the prophets also wrote about. Even though we hear mostly about the 12 male disciples. Jesus had many female followers who also spent their time with him and used their gifts to help him and others. The Bible doesn't name many, but it does tell us about Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna and Lydia, who all shared their own wealth, gifts and time. This is Jesus's team. So that was a story about who Jesus did pick to be on his team, but who does Jesus pick to be on his team? Are you on Jesus' team? I'm on Jesus' team. <laughs> I hope I'm on Jesus. I'm. I am on. I'm going to be sure. Does everyone on Jesus' team have to be called Esther? No, because then I'd get really confused in a room. Everybody on Jesus' team has to know Jesus. That's it. So you can definitely be on Jesus' team and all different kinds of people are on Jesus' team. So have a little think, maybe chat to somebody that you're doing this craft with about people that you think are on Jesus' team and what they're like, what's their background, what are they really good at? And you'll realise that there's all sorts of different people. Including some fishermen. Hmm. Yeah. What are we making for our craft today? So we're going to make speed boats. And this isn't just a craft, this is a craft that means you can race the other people in your house. And obviously, I'm gonna be my yourself. craft's going to win. That's <laughs> just the thing. So what are we making? Speed boats made out of? So you need something for your boat. So I don't know what this was. Cherry Some tomatoes. Sort of came in it. Cherry tomatoes, mm -hmm. egg box. Egg box. It needs to be a plastic one, not cardboard. 
Yeah, I mean you could do cardboard, see how long it lasts, but it's going to go in water. <laughs> so some sort of base for your boat. If you want to, you can decorate this, but we're so keen to race. We're just going to make it really fast. We're just going to make it, and you can make prettier ones. Which one do you want? We have three. I want that one. Okay, I'm going to use this one. Fabulous. What colour uh, balloon would you like? Pink, purple, green, red? Green. You're red. Oh, red. <laughs> I'm going to have red. Cat's going to have green. I'm going to get rid of those. Now, when your boat is fully made, it's going to be quite tricky to blow your balloon up. So we recommend you have a go at blowing it up first. Give it a good stretch. If it's really difficult, oh. don't make yourself pass out by trying really hard. Give it to an adult and get Cat's them to do it. Cat's just learned a new technique. Cat, do you want to demonstrate? You blow a bit of air in and then you pinch it while you take, you take another breath, breath because <gasps> Kat was trying to keep the air in and take a breath all at the same time and it just you doesn't work. You don't need work. to tell everyone I'm rubbish at blowing balloons up. Well, I feel like some other people might make that mistake, so. So get it nice and big and then lay it all out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't blow a balloon up while I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so you then need a straw. Now, the best types of straws for this particular craft are bendy straws. <laughs> Payback. Okay. Bendy straws. Um, and you're going to put the shorter end of your bendy straw into your balloon. Like that. Oh, that made a good noise. If you don't have a bendy straw, you can still do this. You just need to make sure in a minute when we angle it that you, you make sure that the bottom is below the boat. Very you need some cool. sellotape. Uh, do. Can you find the end? Never. Got it. So do you want to hold yours while I so, tape it? If you can make sure that the end of your balloon is as tight as possible round your straw, because you don't want any air to escape when you blow it up. Oh. Mm. I'm gonna just cut me a piece off and then you can do this. Thank you very much. So we're just wrapping the sellotape around. We want to make the best seal that we can do. Don't forget that you've just blown your balloon up, so the end of your balloon might be a bit wet. Also, probably worth saying, you shouldn't share balloons at the moment. No. Or straws. Although in a household, it's probably yeah. okay. With your own family, but not with friends. Oh, my, my sellotape is not very sticky. How don't you crush your straw when you're taping this. So you do want it tight, but don't squish your straw. That's not going to go too well. And then you want to test that you can still blow your balloon up. So blow down the end of your straw. And then that's working nicely. The children in year, hmm, in year six, I think, were making lungs and uh, the same way demonstrating ah, how the air clever. goes in and out of balloons when I was in school last term. So once you've got a nice good seal and you can still blow it up, you want to attach your balloon to your boat. So your balloon's going to be in the main bit of your boat and then the bit that bends if you put it right on the edge of your boat so that this can move. And so when you, you blow your balloon... where you put it in the water. It doesn't matter if the whole balloon doesn't fit in there because it will just move itself so that it fits so that you can get as much air in as you can. Okay. Did I lose the end of this? Oh, goodness. So get yourself a little bit more sellotape. You might need a couple of smaller bits. And just go over the bit. Where your straw bends, make sure it's securely attached to your boat. Boats usually have names, don't they? Oh, that's a good thought. Should we name our boats? What are you going to call your boat? Well, we could name them after the fishermen that are on Jesus' team. We'd need a lot more boats. We would. <laughs> You'd have to choose a favourite. How do you choose a favourite out I'm of the I'm going to call mine James. James? Oh. See if you can find out what some of the other fishermen on Jesus' team were called. Well, you might be able to remember from our story, actually. So. I didn't manage to secure mine very well. I think I'm not doing well with sellotape today. I'm using that as an excuse for in case my boat loses. That's my plan anyway. And that is your boat ready to race. Yours okay. is almost there. I'm really, I'm nearly there. Hang on. Let's give it a whirl. If you cover Amazing. the end, it will keep the air in. <laughs> I'll hold it. Ta-da! So we're going to race these, and we're going to remember that Jesus picks all sorts of different people to be on his amazing team. Shall we go and race? Well, let's race. Oh!
I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh they make a oh, cracking noise. Oh, the ah. red was one. The balloon. There we go. On your marks. Okay. Get set. Go. Yeah, ready. Get set. Go. Oh, <laughs> that one didn't even go in the water and it still won. <laughs> Hi. So our theme for the summer holidays is all about teams. And each week we're going to set somebody a challenge to do while they are setting you a challenge for that week. This is the first one. I challenge Cat. Reverend Cat, would you give today's challenge wearing the straw as a moustache? So you're challenging me to wear this as a moustache? That is your challenge while you give the challenge. Oh! Oh, no! <laughs> I don't think that's gone well. Oh! No, I can't do it! I can't do it! I challenge you! Ah! 